Thank you for joining us. My name is Carrie Smith, and on behalf of Cumulus Networks, I'd like to welcome you to Making the Switch to Bare Metal and Open Networking. Presenting today will be William Cho. William is the Senior Director of Products and Alliances at Cumulus Networks. Most recently, he was the Executive Director of Marketing at Dell Networking, and prior to that, he was at Cisco, where he was the Senior Director of Marketing, contributing to the growth of Catalyst Fixed Configuration switching to $6 billion per year. The webinar will be about 30 to 45 minutes. We will answer a few questions from the participants at the end of time permits. For those of you interested, you have the opportunity to ask questions during the webinar by using the window marked questions. Simply type in your question and click send. You can also tweet your questions to us, and our Twitter handle is at Cumulus Networks. And with that, I'd like to turn this over to William. Thank you, Carrie. So um, Happy New Year to everyone. It's an exciting time. Um, as Carrie mentioned, what we'd like to kind of focus on here today is uh, bare metal and open networking and, and really uh, understand you know, how customers and how the ecosystem is bringing bare metal and open networking to the market, evaluate uh, the, the broad adoption, and, and ultimately uh, recognize that it, it's an exciting time in networking today. And it might be helpful to start um, really kind of looking at you know, how this all has come about. And, and if you think about the, the web scale operators you know, have been uh, adopting bare metal and, and open networking capabilities you know, for five plus years now, you know, one of the, the key tenets is built around this idea of vendor independence, you know, creating the disaggregation of software and hardware, and then automating the complete data center environment. Not only the compute infrastructure, but networking allows for you know, a significant operational cost savings, rapid innovation, so now you have the ability to standardize on tool sets, and, and most importantly, now you, you can deploy a, a transparent or, or an invisible fabric to allow for applications to have uh, no, no barriers as it relates to performance. And, and the key point here is that you know, these are uh, design points or tenants that actually scale you know, from a, a 10 rack environment to you know, thousands of racks. And so the point being is th this is meant for, uh, for all customer environments, uh, whether small or large. And so when, when you think about this, um, th this is actually not a new notion. Networking in the data center as an open architecture has been uh, going on for some time, first in the compute space. And so as you guys might recall, um, you know, when we had risk-based uh, servers, uh, Unix-based platforms, you, know, you had a completely uh, vertically integrated solution from hardware operating systems and applications. And then with x86 and Linux, that transformation occurred and you saw a, a significant change in the economics of compute implementations, but also in terms of the flexibility, in terms of the, the innovation. And so now, nowadays, by and large, compute is deployed as is completely disaggregated, x86 and Linux, or, or any other third-party operating system for that matter. And so networking has been making that journey and transformation, you know, first with the, the web scale operators, you know, four or five years ago, but now you're finding, uh, you know, the, the mid-market mainstream enterprise adopting this model uh, around the globe. And so when you look at this and, and what this means uh, for the industry, it, it helps to, to evaluate the networking supply chain. And so at the, at the kind of very basic level, you have contract manufacturers that effectively provide procurement, manufacturing, logistic services. And, and for instance here, Celestica and Foxconn are, are um, you know, the, the largest of contract manufacturers in the industry today. Um, you know, they provide this large-scale cost-effective manufacturing service for networking hardware, among other uh, infrastructure, but typically to the OEM as customers. And then similarly, you have Finisar and JDSU that provide optics or interconnects. They, they are the manufacturers of the optics and cables, and, and they are typically rebranded by, by those same OEMs. And so the OEMs we're, we're all very much familiar with, you know, as it relates to uh, data center switches, 
uh, they're often leveraging the, that supply chain for relatively standard reference designs, logistics, and, and professional services. And then subsequently, the, the end user consumes these technologies, sometimes directly from the OEM, but oftentimes leveraging distributors, and, and resellers, and, and these distributors often are providing that local stocking, providing predictable lead times while facilitating a, a very large or, or vast reseller community. And that reseller you know, often comes in various different shapes and sizes, providing uh, on one hand a, a very low cost fulfillment engine, or oftentimes uh, a very full service system integration capability. And then with that, what I'd like to kind of share with you is, uh, you know, what that traditional networking supply chain means for the, the end user. And so here, you know, generally a, a supply chain is adding value in the transformation of goods and services, you know, with every step along the way. And, and with each transformation is, is effectively represented by here uh, a, some cumul cumulative cost and an industry standard uh, gross margin. So as you can see here, if you just take a hypothetical uh, gross cost starting point of $100 and a contract manufactured industry margin of 10%, you know, the, the transfer cost to the OEM effectively becomes $111. And then with an OEM standard margin of 70, uh, 70%, their transfer cost to the distributor is 370 and so on and so on. And ultimately, as you can see here, what happens is as that transformation occurs by way of the supply chain is that the end user is effectively paying a four and a half X multiplier from that raw cost of $100 as a, as a basic denomination. Now, if you think about this, you know, historically, this made a lot of sense because with complex systems evolving standards, um, you know, a lot of the IP was really born and, and developed by way of the, the OEMs. However, as markets mature, most of that value is actually being generated earlier. And a lot of this, as, as we may know today, uh, is you look at the hardware and the, the bare metal switch, much of it is uh, merchant silicon. And ultimately, because the standards uh, having uh, become very uh, flattened, if you will, and, and being integrated into a, an SOC or a system on a chip, that technology is, is being effectively baked in earlier on. Um, and even, even OEMs today, you're finding, are leveraging merchant silicon for those standard um, uh, bare metal switches or data center switches. Now, if you kind of fast forward to what's happening today with the, the modern networking supply chain, is that you, you have um, a very similar model being able to leverage the distributors and resellers, being able to provide the delivery of goods and services to end users. But obviously the, the one very uh, obvious change here is that multiplier, again from that same $100 cost of goods as a basic denomination, now presents itself as a, a 1.8x multiplier. And, and with that, what you're finding today is that those same contract manufacturers in some cases, and, and there's uh, the ODMs, the original design manufacturers who traditionally supply the OEMs, are now providing products and technologies you know, for five plus years to the, the web scale operators, but over the last couple of years directly to end users globally um, and of, of all sizes. And then, more recently, over the last 12 to 18 months, OEMs such as Dell being the first to offer a, an open networking solution with a choice of operating system is also leading and, and changing the industry as it means to being able to procure, deploy, and operate bare metal and open networking systems. And ultimately, what this means for the customer is that for that every dollar, hundred dollars spent, there is a, an incremental two hundred and seventy-eight dollars, or or two and a half x premium from going from the the um, traditional to the modern networking supply chain. 
And so th this becomes a, a very compelling CapEx differentiation that, that's just inherent in that supply chain. Now, as you translate that to, uh, you know, what does that mean for me, you know, as a customer, what we try to express here is that, you know, not only is there a significant cost savings and, and putting it into very uh, tangible terms, if you will. So if you, if you look at a, a traditional networking switch, you know, whether it be a, a Cisco Nexus 3K or the more recently introduced Nexus 9K, there is a significant CapEx savings, as you can see here. But, but one of the other kind of major benefits that actually comes about with this transition to open networking, very similar to the, the compute industry, is you have simplified and transparent pricing. And the key point being here is that historically networking has always had this uh, very high list price and a very broad range of discounts. You know, if you were a very large cloud operator, you might get, you know, very high discounts, uh, but mid-markets uh, will see much lower discounts, and those discount ranges can often spread 60, 70 points. However, what you'll find um, is that a much more friendly, a much more transparent pricing model, just very similar to the compute industry, is um, you know, you'll have a, effectively a MSRP, which for lower volumes where networking as well as servers are often transacted at, um, with a, a, a reasonable discount, you know, something in the 20% range, let's say, uh, for much larger scaled uh, deployments. And ultimately, the customer benefits by this because the, the pricing is not a, a big kind of negotiation game as you, as you might experience in buying a, a used car, as an example. And then the next key benefit um, is also comes around the fact that uh, with an open networking, customers now have the choice of picking and choosing interconnects, you know, whether it be a twin X cable or a 10 gig transceiver as, as we've depicted here. You can see here the, the disparity, and, and many of you might have had this similar experience you know, on a more personal level buying you know, an HDMI cable as, as I had recently uh, bought uh, you know, some audio video equipment over the holidays you know, you, you're often paying, you know, 10, 20 X for what that cable uh, really should be priced at. And so you can see here, you know, industry leading um, SFP plus SR optics as a list price is, is $1,000. And, and if you're getting a, a very significant discount, you know, maybe that's um, the street price is somewhere in the neighborhood of three to $400. And as you can see here, in ODM SFP plus SR optics at $40, you know, even price point from the traditional vendor discounted, you're looking at orders of magnitude difference. And so this is, um, you know, one of the, the uh, key, I'd say, Achilles heels in the industry, and people, uh, customers are recognizing that th this needs to change at a minimum, and being able to leverage the open ecosystem, not only from the switch uh, perspective, but also as it relates to interconnects and, uh, and cables. Now you might ask, um, so this is great. I, I love the idea of having, um, you know, the low cost, uh, you know, CapEx option. Um, I, I like the ability to have choice. And so, you know, where can I buy this is often the next question. And so, you know, we at Cumulus Networks, along with uh, the other broader ecosystem of solution providers uh, pushing uh, this new uh, model, this new era, of bare metal switches and open networking, is, is it really making it easy to procure by way of uh, your own uh, typical channels, partners or, or res local resellers, uh, as well as online alternatives. And so here you can see there, there are a couple options, uh, whether it be whitebox.com or baremetalswitch.com. You'll find that you can find um, bare metal switch providers uh, that, that we support by way of our hardware compatibility list. and, and the option to be able to procure Cumulus Linux, uh, as simple as add to cart here. Not only that, you, you often uh, are going to get the value added services as it relates to local spares and, and a return to depot uh, service capability and a global 
uh, 24 by 7 global support capability. And, and the key here is that you're able to leverage that uh, traditional supply chain distribution and resellers that are regional or, or may have some vertical uh, capabilities uh, that you're more um, accustomed to, and, and we're looking to enable that uh, as you would expect to adopt uh, bare metal and open networking today. Okay, now with that, uh, I wanted to kind of turn the page here and, um, you know, as you can uh, kind of internalize that, you know, there, there perhaps is a significant benefit around having choice and having uh, a significant cost savings as it relates to having uh, bare metal switching, what we also want to make sure that you take away is that you can also get great networking with a choice of architectures. And so we at Cumulus Networks, you know, look to make sure that we can ease the migration to bare metal switching and open networking by being able to have, you know, any number of network architectures that you have a preference for, you know, whether it be a, a traditional layer two network, an IP fabric, or, or more recently, IP fabrics with network overlays leveraging technologies like uh, VXLAN. And so we, we support all as a, an option. So with a traditional layer two network, le whether leveraging a, a spanning tree technology or MLAG, we can make this a, a very uh, seamless drop-in uh, architecture for your existing environments, uh, while others that might want to leverage IP fabrics, you know, whether for the core or completely uh, to the host, uh, we make IP cloth fabrics, you know, very scalable um, and, and very easy to deploy with some key uh, innovations there. And then lastly, um, the IP fabrics with network overlays, you know, one of the key approaches here um, is to be able to have uh, VXLAN uh, tunneling capabilities, NCAP and TCAP in hardware, but also having a choice of overlay partners. And so we'll talk about that um, as our industry leaders with uh, VMware, as an example, with uh, NSX, but, but there are also many other emerging overlay partners that are coming about, uh, such as Open Contrail or Mitakura. And so this offers a, a, a much more scalable and virtual approach to bridging that physical and uh, virtual world together. And so that, that is one of the key tenets, is being able to adopt networking architectures of your choice, but we're also looking to simplify operations, you know, from uh, the, the whole life cycle, if you will. And so if you think about uh, how the compute industry has evolved, uh, arguably at much larger scale, uh, operations were simplified day zero by way of um, leveraging Pixie Boot uh, by, to install uh, configurations, operating systems in a, in a very zero touch manner. And so we at Cumulus have uh, kind of modeled the networking day zero environment uh, in a very similar fashion. And so U-Boot is kind of the, the BIOS equivalent, if you will, and having uh, originally developed ONI, the open network install environment, which is now an, an OCP project, completely open source and available on GitHub, is now you have the ability to leverage uh, a bare metal switch uh, which you will find with our hardware compatibility list, every single one of them have adopted ONI as their, their own bootloader capability. And then as you want to adopt this capability, you can fully automate what it means from uh, installing Cumulus Linux as a bootloader installing uh, particular agents. Here are some examples of uh, various automation tools. Puppet or Chef are, are often quite um, popular examples historically in the compute industry. Uh, Ansible is, a, is another one. And once you install these agents, you can completely create templates and be able to load uh, particular configurations, uh, load uh, other uh, software agents, and, and be able to completely automate this, uh, very similar to um, what you may leverage in the compute environment. And th this really takes out kind of the, the manual nature, not only um, compressing the, the time to um, deploying that, that data center environment for networking. 
and allows you to get into a production environment uh, fashion in, in a much more seamless and uh, timeless way. Okay, so building on that, and, and as you think about the, the broader life cycle of, of your data center environment, what we wanted to touch on here um, is the software-defined network. And, and here at Cumulus Networks, um, you know, we have uh, an architectural point, uh, approach or, or point of view that I would say is, is very different uh, from you know, alternative approaches to SDN uh, by way of a, a proprietary stack. And so interestingly, if you look at both approaches, uh, they both leverage a very broad ecosystem where proprietary stacks will have highly engineered solutions with tight integration across all layers, the question that you need to consider here is that if a solution component is not what you expected, uh, you know, whether day one or six months in, you, you, were, you are tied into that, that stack uh, because everything is tightly integrated um, and coupled in that fashion. And so what the loosely coupled architecture really enables is flexibility at all layers, ultimately choice. And some of the key points that, that you would like you to consider ultimately is really by way of uh, being able to leverage a standard Linux interface, you have a broad and, and a very rapidly evolving ecosystem. And so the broadness is just historically exists because Linux has been in deployment in production in the server environment for some time, you have the ability to leverage uh, various monitoring tools, automation tools, uh, and, and bringing the networking um, construct now into that fold and con providing that consolidated or converged administration. And along with that, you have broad customer choice. And so uh, as there are many automation tool choices that we touched on, there are also very, uh, quite a few di different network virtualization overlay choices. Orchestration is also a, a broad option capability that customer ultimately benefits with. And then with that comes the, the acceleration around uh, innovation. And, and this can come in, in some very simple ways such as um, you know, being able to take advantage of uh, the latest security technology that might uh, be available um, being able to adopt, you know, various uh, storage solutions in a converged fashion, but but even around being able to take advantage of security patches, and so you may have uh, heard about or or experienced, um, you know, some of the issues. Heartbleed was a, a broad issue uh, around the Open SSL uh, interface, um, and as a matter of fact, uh, the Linux community was able to uh, patch and address. Uh, the Heartbleed uh, virus uh, upon announcement literally within a few hours, and we had uh, a patch in a similar fashion for Heartbleed uh, in that same day of the announcement. Shellshock is another great example of that. And because it's just a Linux distribution, you can um, you know, effectively just take that OpenSSL package or the Shellshock package and be able to patch that in your distribution, regress that, and, and introduce that in your production environment very quickly, and so it allows for very rapid uh, integration and patching of, uh, you know, various security vulnerabilities. And then lastly, um, you, you do get to benefit from a very large community. Again, you know, whether it be security patches or other innovations, the open source community is by far the largest development community leveraging open protocols or standard protocols uh, to take advantage uh, across the networking space as well. And then what we would like to also then do is introduce these same concepts um, across you know, various uh, use cases. And as we've been working with uh, various customers of, of all sizes, you know, one of the things that we've uh, kind of seen as a, as a pattern is that often uh, customers are looking to adopt uh, different use cases or a few use cases with open networking. And, and with those uh, design patterns, what we're consistently seeing is uh, that customers are looking to deploy virtualization using uh, VMware's vSphere, workload orchestration with OpenStack, or big data solutions around Hadoop. 
And in each of these cases, what you often find is a common theme is software is really the driver. You know, it's not the physical hardware. In, in the hardware, they're looking to, uh, to standardize and, and ultimately get to uh, a rapid kind of provisioning in a very virtualized uh, fashion. And so with that, what we are trying to drive here is the, the idea that, you know, you can have your own ecosystem. You can kind of pick and choose based on any one of these uh, design patterns. Um, and ultimately, there are similarities in, in terms of how they get deployed, you know, whether it be around workload orchestration, uh, application virtualization, or, or be big data. And so with those kind of key themes in mind, what we are trying to empower customers with in, in this uh, transition is that you can leverage standard technology, as we talked about before, adopting you know, these uh, design patterns across uh, a, a traditional layer two environment with MLAG and uh, first hop routing protocols, you know, making it very easy to use uh, with a, a Linux capability called IF up down two, um, but as well as across an IP fabric or as uh, with an overlay solution. And then uh, wanting to make it very easy to design and easy to consume, with validated solutions. And so we have stood up each one of these solutions and, and have created a step-by-step -step use case guide. So you can kind of take this, uh, with that you'll get bill of materials and then the how-to operational guide so the, and automation starter uh, toolkits to be able to implement this in your environment. And then ultimately, you, we want to make sure that in your, uh, your life cycle, there, there are deployment tools that make it very easy. So we have use cases and automation training. In many cases, because of that community, there are uh, templates uh, readily available from our uh, community of customers and ecosystem partners, as well as making those available on a, a remote workbench that we host called Cumulus Workbench. And ultimately, the, the key point here is open networking is available for all organizations of all sizes. You know, whether you have uh, significant IT resources and look to kind of do it yourself in-house, or whether you're looking to uh, your, your trusted advisors and partners to be able to help uh, along the way uh, with key design guides, uh, tools, and, and reference architectures. So with that, um, you know, we're very excited about the, this new era of uh, bare metal and open networking. And ultimately, it's, it's about uh, leveraging the, the openness uh, to unlock, you know, that choice, you know, not only at the infrastructure, you know, the, the switch and the, the cable and optics level, but at, at all levels, you know, whether it be around automation tools, your network virtualization solution, um, but being able to have uh, horizontally also the, the variety of network architectures from layer two, layer three to the overlay solution. You want to make sure that this uh, IT environment that you develop uh, the data center is, is highly responsive, not only from uh, being a, a deterministic or predictable automated environment, being able to um, you know, take and spin up VMs uh, perhaps in minutes as you do today, but having the network be able to respond uh, along with that in a, in a highly converged and orchestrated environment. And then lastly, uh, you know, the, the basic benefit uh, is that you have the ability to save as you grow. You can start with a, you know, a two to 10 rack environment, but scale that outwards of thousands of rack as needed and be able to enjoy the CapEx savings by leveraging uh, market forces or industry standard hardware. But uh, in turn, more importantly, um, as many of our customers have discovered, is, is really the OPEX savings that you get out of automation, being able to leverage standard or open tools, and then being able to leverage uh, those savings uh, in deploying, um, you know, literally bi-directional, you know, IP fabrics that, you know, effectively because you have now more affordable capacity. So with that, uh, you know, we, again, we're very excited about uh, what this means. Uh, as many of customers have adopted open networking in their environments, we're looking at uh, forward to making it very easy 
to procure, design, and, and operate. And, and to start that journey, uh, we have created a remote capability where you can try open networking across a, a number of uh, physical hardware. So we have what we call Cumulus Workbench uh, that uh, we have physically stood up 1 gig, 10 gig, 40 gig switches. You can create them in a layer 2, layer 3, um, or an overlay solution environment, run uh, any number of applications that we support, whether it be automation or monitoring, or your own application we can go ahead and host uh, in your own sandbox, uh, for which we call Cumulus Workbench. And so we encourage you to uh, you know, give this a try. It, it allows you, uh, you know, a very hands-on approach to experience what it means, how easy it is to configure and operate, um, and, and we want to make that available uh, to the community at large. Great, William. Thanks. We have a lot of great questions coming in. Um, first question, do you have any detailed use cases that you can touch on um, or that you'd like to talk about? Yeah, so um, the, the use cases that, um, you know, use cases can come in a number of different fashions. They're the ones that we had talked about here more recently around uh, virtualization. So many customers adopting use cases around vSphere. Um, Hadoop is a, a very common one, distributed storage. And so whether it be around vSAN or Ceph implementation, taking advantage of affordable capacity is a, is a key focus area. The other one is um, you know, around workload orchestration or OpenStack. So one of the key pain points, if you will, around OpenStack is around configuration of the network. And so by leveraging uh, standard infrastructure, making it very easy to use as we have plugins uh, for OpenStack as well, is being able to leverage open networking in, in all of those use cases. Now, there, there is also the very basic use case as many customers are, have been comfortable with the idea in inserting open networking in their current environments in a very traditional layer two uh, application. So as we support MLAG and various rapid uh, spanning tree protocols, you can just leverage uh, in, in a very standard networking use case or an IP fabric is, is traditionally what uh, Cumulus Linux was uh, historically built on. And so they, they do span uh, a number of different types of uh, use cases, you know, from a solution level down to uh, the basic networking architecture. Great. Um, so next question, is there a training and certification program available? So we, we do have a very broad uh, offering around uh, enablement programs and, and curricula. And so as you can see here, um, you know, please feel free to reach out to us uh, by way of the email alias. There, there is a number of um, consulting and training uh, programs that we have available. Um, and so look forward to, to being able to help our partners and customers uh, quickly come up to speed uh, as it relates to open networking. Great. And we're also launching a new uh, training and certification page, I believe, tomorrow, right? Yes, Tra that's right. Cumulusnetworks.com slash training hyphen and hyphen certification. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Next question. Can we test Can we test Cumulus on any white box switch? So uh, theoretically, the concept of um, white box switches or open networking is that, you know, as long as they, they have uh, the bootloading environment, uh, as we discussed, ONI, the open network install environment, uh, you should be able to install um, third-party operating systems, whether it be Cumulus Linux or others that are out there in, uh, in the industry. This, this is the, the goal that we're trying, trying to drive towards the industry. The, the reality today is there, there is a fair amount of integration work that needs to happen as uh, each vendor's bare metal switch have different environmental implementations, CPU subsystems. And so we're still um, at a point where we're doing, we at Cumulus Networks are integrating the third party bare metal switch uh, with Cumulus Linux and with ONI as that uh, bootloader. And so uh, today uh, you can go to our hardware compatibility list on our website and you can find I think upwards of 20 different configurations from five different manufacturers of all different uh, configurations, 1 gig, 10 gig, and 40 gig, that support uh, open networking along with Cumulus Linux. 
Great, and next question, is open networking only for data center or can it be used for ISP deployments as well? So today, Cumulus Networks, as a startup, we, we are, uh, I would say, focused and, and very much focused on um, being able to enable and transform uh, data center environments, predominantly uh, leap and spine or top of rack and uh, aggregation switching solutions. Uh, depending on the, the uh, particular feature requirements, uh, certainly from a performance standpoint, you can take advantage of bare metal, uh, bare metal switching you know, for uh, a gateway uh, environment, but ultimately it really depends on uh, the particular uh, service level and application requirements that you might have uh, in terms of VPN technology, security technology, and so encourage you to, to follow up with us and, and we'd have to look at that use case uh, a bit more specifically as, as we do support it in some environments, but, but uh, not entirely. Great, next question. Um, actually, a lot of great questions coming in. For those of us that have ONI compatible hardware, is there an evaluation of Cumulus Linux to test in our lab? Yes, so if, if you're interested in uh, an evaluation of Cumulus Linux and you already have um, ONI compatible hardware from our uh, hardware compatibility list, uh, please do reach out to us and, and we look uh, forward to, to being able to help you out um, with evaluations. Great, um, and then next question, um, do we have any, well, I can probably answer this, but <laughs> is there any additional information on our website um, that can show integration with overlay controllers like NSX or Open Contrail, and how does that integrate with Cumulus OS-based switch? Yes, so um, we, we do have, a, a, frankly, a wealth of information uh, on our website, um, everything from uh, other webinars like this that specifically have focused on overlay uh, controller solutions to uh, white papers, um, and as well as our partners have, uh, have similar offerings, the white papers and design guides around how to integrate with um, open networking and bare metal switches along with Cumulus Linux. And so um, if you're not finding uh, what you're looking for there, again, please feel free to reach out to us and, and we'll help uh, connect those dots. Um, and then other than Broadcom, what other silicon is supported by Cumulus Linux? So today, um, you know, Broadcom, as you may know, you know whether uh, adopted by uh, OEM switch vendors uh, or the other bare metal switch vendors that, that we work with, uh, Broadcom by far is um, kind of the more prevalent solution. And so that, that is the switch fabric that we have adopted today. Um, we do support uh, a variety of CPUs, uh, whether it be historically PowerPC, um, you're finding more and more x86 going forward in the future. And ultimately, we, we do um, you know, express a desire and ultimately we'll look to invest in, in creating that open ecosystem of switch fabrics and, and CPU subsystems. But today, it is a Broadcom and, and we are evaluating all uh, switch fabrics. So there are a number of different startups as well as established um, switch fabrics that are available uh, that we'll look to uh, introduce in the, in the coming future. Uh, next question, could this be deployed as a packet flow switch? So the, the concept of a packet flow switch, well, let me back up a second. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we, we are very much focused on the data center market, in particular around uh, being able to provide you know, highly affordable capacity, you know, highly automatable, and really in that um, top of rack, server uh, or storage access uh, in traditional leak and spine architectures. Um, in the event um, there are some customers looking for packet flow technology or some people might call it NFE, network function virtualization, um, it is an area that we, we are investigating um, and it is an area that likely you will want to have additional uh, NPU functionality to be able to um, provide that functionality as opposed to uh, relying on the control plane CPU as depending on scale and performance requirements, you can quickly uh, overrun the, the control plane CPU and memory that's available in a traditional networking switch. Great, and will Cumulus Networks or Cumulus Linux training be available for download somewhere at, at some point? So we, we do have uh, training that, that is available today. Um, 
you know, we, we have uh, self-paced training uh, that you can uh, go through a, a CL101 course, go through a, a self-paced um, lab guide, and leveraging the Cumulus Workbench uh, resource to do uh, at, at your own leisure. And so that, that in fact, is available today, uh, again, with uh, CL101. Now, and, and as well, um, we are looking to uh, package and offer other types of remote training capabilities um, as you go on. And if there are particular areas of, of training and technology that you're interested in, please, uh, again, reach out to us uh, as we appreciate the feedback. Um, and another question, can you talk a little bit about Cumulus, Linux, and Open Daylight Project, and if they are related or if they're not related? Sure. So, um, you know, as, as we kind of have talked about, uh, Cumulus's approach um, to applications or uh, controller solutions is to be open. And as we talked about, we, we have um, architectures and, and solutions that we've made available and customers have adopted with a number of third parties. Open Daylight is, is another controller solution that, that we're monitoring. It, it's uh, questionable as to kind of what the direction is. It originally started as kind of a, um, a feeding ground for kind of the traditional OEM vendors to kind of take and, and drive kind of some amount of proprietary implementation and thought leadership there. And it, it's not clear as to kind of what the product direction is. Um, if there is a particular use case um, that you're seeing out there and that we need to evaluate, you know, again, because of our openness, we're looking to make uh, Cumulus Linux to support uh, any other um, controller solution or SDN overlay solution. Great. And next question, who is responsible for hardware and software support? So that, that's a great question. Um, you know, as we talked about all of the, uh, the CapEx benefits and the, the OpEx benefits, um, you know, often what our customers uh, are looking for is, you know, what, what happens or how do we address support uh, in the event uh, something were to come about. And the thing I would generally um, refer to is very similar to what how you might uh, employ support in your computer environment, we employ the, the same exact model. So, for example, um, you know, we, we as Cumulus Networks provide the full integrated support for hardware and software. So we really want to take kind of any finger pointing out of the picture. And so in the event um, that you have a, an issue, and, and you may not know if it's a hardware issue or a software issue, there, there are many um, that are kind of transient in nature, uh, you will always uh, get support from Cumulus Networks uh, 24 by 7 um, with any type of issue. So that, that's one scenario. The other scenario is that we have many OEM uh, partners uh, as an example, uh, and reseller partners um, that provide that frontline support. And so you can uh, often reach out to them, uh, you know, whether it uh, be Penguin or Acton or, or Dell as an example, they will also uh, kind of provide that level of support. And then uh, thirdly, you have the choice if, if it's very clear that uh, you say, let's say you have a power, power supply failure or fan failure, you know it's a hardware in an RMA situation, you can certainly reach out to your local reseller or hardware vendor uh, to uh, initiate an RMA or rep uh, return to depot. Great. Uh, next question, are there any other networking solutions offering a similar solution? Yeah, so the, the networking industry, as we talked about, is, is really driving and customers are adopting this uh, open model. And um, as, there, uh, as we've talked about, there are many uh, industry standard hardware solutions available. We've talked about a number of those uh, partners today. There are other uh, third-party operating systems available. Um, I, I'm aware of a couple that have made uh, public announcements in the past, uh, a couple startups uh, such as Big Switch and Pika 8, um, and I, I believe there are others that are making um, you know, investments and forays into um, uh, disaggregation and making Operating a network operating system available with industry standard switches. Great, and so I've seen this actually. I've seen this next question come up a few times, um, and a lot of people are interested in, you know, Cumulus Linux documentation or guides because they want to progress their um, education further. Is there anything that you would recommend um, in addition to docs.cumulusnetworks.com? Um, any other reading or guides um, for people interested in? 
studying or consulting. Right, right. So um, as, as Carrie pointed out, first and foremost, um, you know, we, we believe in completely open and transparency, and, and so to that end, all of our technical documentation, user guides are, are available uh, on our website. Uh, but moreover, the, you, you do have a wealth of other um, content or assets around white papers, webinars as, as today's, uh, but in a much more detailed uh, technology basis, you, you'll find uh, a number of other assets available out there. Um, but ultimately, it, it, I would argue it's hard to trade off um, you know, experience. And so again, kind of going back to the Cumulus Workbench, um, you know, being able to actually get hands-on, you, you will learn far more, you know, what this means. And, and this is kind of in a very no, uh, no strings attached, uh, kind of very rapid uh, motion. You can get, um, kind of get your hands dirty very quickly uh, by um, subscribing and, and carving out a Cumulus Workbench session. Perfect. Um, a lot of questions coming in, and I hope you have a lot of Bring it on. Yeah. <laughs> um, does Cumulus Networks provide a BGP implementation? Yes, and, and so in fact, um, Cumulus Networks, uh, you know, where JR and Nolan, our, our co-founders, had, had really built the company, it was around building great IP fabrics. Um, and so some of you may be aware that we, we have implemented Quagga as our IP routing stack. Um, and, and we do support um, BGP, V2, V3, OSTF, uh, V4, V6. Um, and so th these are fully, um, you know, first-class citizen routing protocols uh, that we support. We've made a number of uh, innovations and implementations to make it uh, more easy to configure, easy to implement, easier to troubleshoot. And so I encourage you uh, to take a look. Uh, go after an evaluation, trial run, uh, if there are more specific questions around uh, BGP, whether it be around policy, performance, what have you, uh, happy to follow up there. Great. Um, and a lot of people have actually been asking about our previous webinars. Um, I believe we have about 18 different webinar recordings um, from the past few months on our website. So if you'd like to check those out, this one will also be available on our website, and you can find those at cumulusnetworks.com slash webinars. Um, all of our on-demand, all of our upcoming, so you can just go ahead and, and check those out. Um, and the last question, who is adopting bare metal and open networking? This is actually a two-part question. Who's adopting bare metal and open networking, or is bare metal and open networking only for the web scale operators? Yeah, so that, that's, a, that's a great question. Um, you know, so today I, I would say you're, you're seeing bare metal and open networking adopted uh, across the globe. Uh, we, we have customers in, in Japan, Australia, you know, all parts of Asia, across Europe, um, and, and in fairness, uh, we've seen uh, a significant adoption here in the States as, as that's kind of where we had started. Um, geographically, um, across uh, verticals, I would say you're seeing uh, or size of customers across all different uh, customer bases. Uh, you know, so certainly uh, the web scale operators, technology, um, markets have been early adopters, but we see financial customers, biotech, um, universities, higher education. Uh, in fact, we have customers um, in the uh, labs environment, so national laboratories here in the U.S., uh, we can account for the majority of them as uh, adopters of our technology in HPC environments, um, small medium environments, uh, as well as uh, enterprise customers. So. It, it's, it's become quite widespread, and a lot of that is, uh, from a products and technology standpoint, making it very easy to design, very easy to integrate into your uh, current environments, being able to provide design guides uh, and deployment guides um, to be able to take advantage uh, of various automation tools or uh, controller solutions have made it very easy. Um, and so it has become quite quite broad. and so. Uh, you know, if this is uh, if there's an opportunity now, I, I would encourage you again to to take a look at uh, some of the assets that are available out there. Uh, the remote workbench um, is a, a very easy way to kind of get familiar with and, and kind of acquaint yourself with the technology. Great, and and, um, and you know, it's funny. Just when you think there's one final question, there's always more. <laughs> Um, how do you differ if, differentiate Cumulus Linux distribution approach to other 
open source based networking operating systems like the ONS initiative from ON Lab. Right, right. So, uh, you know, ultimately from a, um, a Linux distribution standpoint, um, you know, I, I would say our focus is um, to maintain an open architecture, you know, and, and making it fully um, deployable across the, the stack. And so this is one of the components that we talk about is, you know, in a loosely con uh, coupled SDN architecture, you know, we, we've made it, um, you know, highly available across a, a very broad number of industry standard hardware, and we continue to invest, you know, whether it be in new technologies or, or new hardware partners to make it very easy to consume. But more so, uh, making our Linux distribution compatible across uh, any number of network virtualization overlays, automation tools, monitoring tools. And so this, this will be continuing a, a high area of focus uh, in the spirit of making uh, customer choice available. More so, uh, as you look at how we've implemented networking for Linux, um, th this is almost a, a whole other session uh, that we can talk about around you know, how we've made routing just much more easily uh, deployable with OSPF unnumbered, you know, how can we make um, cloth fabrics, in some cases, very complex cloth fabrics, um, easy to design by way of um, you know, a, a design program or an illustrator program and then uh, implement it across your IP fabric in a very predictable fashion. So we have a technology that's open source called the, the Prescriptive Topology Manager. And so there, there are a number of key innovations that we continue to make open, uh, although the innovations may have come from Cumulus Networks originally, but ultimately solving uh, various customer uh, pain points across, again, operations, design, uh, monitoring. Great. Uh, next question, and I'm, I'm going to actually, this will be our final question. Um, would it ever make sense to run Cumulus on a virtual machine instead of bare metal? Yeah, so that, that's a great question, and it's one that, um, you know, we're excited about, um, you know, and, and ultimately, um, you know, as a, a VM, you know, there are probably a few different lenses to kind of think about. You know, there, there are many um, environments where uh, people might want to just learn, um, and a, a VM can help kind of accelerate, you know, the learning process. Uh, there may be some that uh, want to actually do some design or development work. And so being able to create, uh, spin up a VM, uh, do some application development, um, you know, is another use case. Another is, is to do some actual test. Now testing, uh, you know, although you might be able to get um, and validate uh, key capabilities, you know, with a VM, I'd argue there, there's going to be a number of areas that will be very difficult unless you have the physical environment as it relates to performance testing, as it might uh, relate to convergence testing, especially in some kind of scale. Um, and then in deployment, a deployment might be another uh, model where uh, a VM could uh, be helpful as a product. And so we're looking at all lifecycle components as it relates to um, a VM uh, opportunity and, and look uh, to us shortly to be able to come back with a, a more holistic solution to that end. Great. Thanks, William. We're out of time now. Thank you, everyone, for your participation. We hope you found this presentation about bare metal switching and open networking useful. We'd love if you offered your feedback via the follow-up email. Please tune into our next webinar on January 28th, Unlock Your Cloud Potential with Mirantis OpenStack and Cumulus Linux. Or you can join us each week for Coffee with Cumulus um, on Thursday for a product overview and introduction to Cumulus Linux. Details are available on our website at cumulusnetworks.com slash webinar. Thank you, everyone, for your time today.